Hello everyone! How do you feel about a little challenge? Let's see if you can choose the right option in the following sentences. Here is sentence 1. And the correct answer is... Here is sentence 2. And the right answer is... Few. And here goes sentence 3. And the answer is hair. If you have made a mistake or two, don't you worry, because now we will talk about the grammar that you need to know to avoid making the same mistakes again. We'll talk about countable and uncountable nouns and the quantifiers, words expressing quantity, that go with them. First things first, how do we know if a noun is countable? Whatever you can use together with a number is countable, it's that easy. For example, nine people, six matches, four books, six donuts, four parrots, two wellies, two buses, 14 coins. Now let's go through the nouns that are uncountable. Liquids, water, juice, blood, shampoo, solids, cheese, ice, bread, paper, gases, steam, pollution, air, smoke, particles, hair, dust, rice, salt, Abstractions, beauty, courage, time, music, natural phenomena, weather, electricity, snow, darkness, groups of similar objects, baggage, luggage, equipment, makeup, jewelry. Once you know which nouns are countable, and which are not, follow these grammar rules. A can be used with singular countable nouns, but never with uncountable ones. Essentially, A means one, and as we already know, we can use numbers with countable nouns only. For example, I have a friend who sells shampoo, not a shampoo. If uncountable nouns cannot be counted, they can never be plural either. For instance, could you give me several baskets for the bread? Not breads. The verb that goes with the countable nouns as a subject can be either singular or plural, but uncountable nouns as subjects are used with singular verbs. Compare. Money is important. Dollars are green. A dollar is always a dollar. When we talk about a small quantity, we use few or a few for countable nouns and little a little for uncountable nouns. Have a look. For me, too few songs and too little music every day make a boring life. For big quantities, we use many for countable nouns and much for uncountable nouns. A lot of can be used with both countable and uncountable nouns. Please note that much is usually used in negative sentences and questions, but not in positive sentences. Here are some examples. Many planes or a lot of planes means a lot of pollution, not much pollution. I didn't have much time or a lot of time to visit the museum. Finally, some and any can be used with both countable and uncountable nouns. Some is used in positive sentences, but any in questions and negatives. Consider these examples. I need to buy some salt and some matches. Do you have any salt? Do you have any matches? That's the gist of what grammar you need to know to use countable and uncountable nouns correctly. Still, 
we need to talk about two more things. The first one is tricky nouns. First of all, here are some words that may be countable in your native language, but which are definitely uncountable in English. Fruit, evidence, proof, money, advice, knowledge, news, toast. For example, I don't eat much fruit. They have too little evidence to convict you. No news is good news. How many pieces of toast would you like? A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Secondly, there are some nouns that can be both countable and uncountable, but with a change in meaning. Compare. How many times a week do you read? Time meaning occasion. How much time do you spend reading? Time meaning continuum. Ew, there is a hair in my soup. Hair meaning one separate thread. She has short blonde hair. Hair meaning a collection of hairs growing on one's head. The sausages in these hot dogs taste strange. Sausages meaning tube-like cases with meat. Do you know how sausage is made? Sausage such as salami, bologna, etc. I'm afraid to go to the woods. Wood meaning a forest. How much wood do we need for the fire? Wood as material. I want to buy a paper to read the latest news. Paper meaning a newspaper. I need some paper for the project. Paper as material. Have you fed the chickens? Chicken meaning a bird. There is some chicken in the fridge. Help yourself. Chicken meaning meat. And now for the final point on our agenda today. How to count uncountable things. There are a number of words that can help us to do that, such as a glass of water, a bowl of rice, a bottle of oil, a cup of coffee, a bar of chocolate, a slice of cheese, a carton of milk, a loaf of bread, a kilogram of meat, a liter of lemonade, etc. There is another word that will come in handy, a piece of. This phrase can help us count many abstract things. A piece of advice, a piece of furniture, a piece of equipment, a piece of music, a piece of jewelry, a piece of news, a piece of information, a piece of baggage or luggage, a piece of art, a piece of literature, a piece of work. Well, it's time for our lesson to come to a close. I hope it was useful. Please remember to subscribe to our channel for more useful videos on learning English.